On this episode of Inish Relations, Rob and I discuss the election and whether you're red or blue, does it really matter that much for real estate? We also make our own election predictions and we talk about the NAR settlement and if it's really the worst of all possible worlds. Let's go. This is Industry Relations, a podcast at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. In today's tough real estate market, keeping buyers motivated and loyal is key. Now is the time to leverage the power of one home by CoreLogic and the best in class data and client collaboration experience it brings. Seamlessly integrated into Matrix, one home delivers unbeatable engagement and one of the highest customer satisfaction scores amongst the top 10 national real estate portals. More impressively, One Home leads the pack by keeping users coming back with the highest repeat visits. With One Home's invite-only access, agents can provide their clients a truly exceptional experience. Don't forget to remind your MLS members to try this great value-added benefit. If your MLS hasn't added One Home yet, please reach out to your CoreLogic rep. Thanks again to CoreLogic for sponsoring the Industry Relations Podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Industry Relations with Rob and Greg. This is your co-host, the notorious Rob. As always, my co-host, the fabulous Greg Robertson. Hello, hola, Rob. Oh, hola. You know, I've got. You know, it's like I was. I was following this guy on Twitter, and he says yeah. that. I mean, I'm known for the quarter zips on these yes. things, as people yes. tells me, and it's too much of like dad core. Uh, quarter which zips. I'm a dad, yeah, so uh, I don't know. I don't I think know. Quarter zips are very flattering for men, but here's the thing: you got to zip it a little lower down. A little lower, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because what you want is you want that V. Yeah. Lower. I mean, lower. I need a longer neck anyway, so. No, but the like V lower, kind of... so because what you want to do is accentuate the chest. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. All there right. you oh. go. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to okay. see this, this. That's this is that core, right? Okay. Right, and you want to be like. Oh, right on. Like okay, the Utes. Yeah. The Utes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so as we are recording this, uh, Doomsday is around the corner. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How about <laughs> And by Doomsday, of course, I mean, you know, election day, which is kind of a misnomer now since we have like election month. Uh, yeah, which yeah. is a, an effing joke. Like it's so so embarrassing that like third world countries can do elections in one day and get it, and they'll know who won. Like by the end of the night, we're the most advanced country in the world. We can't figure shit out for like days, weeks, months. It, it's it's an embarrassment. <laughs> However, it is around the corner. So yes, we haven't really talked about politics that much. We haven't really talked about it, but I figure. By the time this comes out, hopefully we'll know who won. Hopefully, right? Yes. Because we'll publish hopefully. on Wednesday. <laughs> There's a chance well, we're not going to know, right? I think the country will know. It'll just be that maybe one one candidate will not accept it unless it goes uh, a certain way. Well, so. I mean, it, that would be even better. Like as long as because remember, there literally election officials around the country are saying, "Well, we're not really going to know for five or six days because we got to count and tabulate the results." So. In any event, the hope is by the time people are watching us on Wednesday, we will have we will know who at least on you know like on paper or whatever have won, right? Yeah. So, uh, who you got? <laughs> That's the election <laughs> predictions. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just uh, you know, uh, I, you know, you read everything's and you know you see the betting pools or whatever else, but uh, and are we doing steak dinner on this? Is that what I, we're doing? If we disagree, I mean, I, I think Trump's okay, going to win right. in a landslide. So no, I, I'm going for Kamala. Okay, you are okay, okay. okay. So yeah. steak dinner vet. There we go. There we go. And you are going for Mr. T. Yes. Right. Okay. We'll put that up here. And then, of course, it's now a steak dinner bet. We've got yes, the steak right here. And... <laughs> that looks That's like right. a T-bone to me, so we'll see what happens there. Man, if you order a T-bone at a steak dinner, I'll be very disappointed. you, you got to order a better cut. <laughs> well, you know, now I can't even eat a full damn, you know, steak. i got to split it with somebody normally now. Oh, so, you just got yeah. a nice, you know, petite filet. Yeah, 
you know yeah, i like a little bit more flavor in mine but yeah. yeah four ounces of wagyu maybe you know oh geez yeah exactly. anyway all right so give me a rationale like why do you think why, why are you thinking she's gonna take it yeah i mean uh, again the hype it's so hyperbolic on every side about what everybody's saying i just you know from you know um you know, the, the end of democracy to they're eating cats and dogs. I mean, it's just on both sides. It's just crazy. But I do think that one thing that's going to, is going to turn this is going to be um, the women's rights issue as far as, you know, uh, abortion and stuff. And I think women are going to come out to this and I think they're just, I think they're going to make the difference here. And that's, that's the kind of premise of what um, I right. think is, is going to make the turn because everybody says it's close. There needs to be, some little factor that kind of turns it around. And I think right. that that has enough to turn it around. Right. So I think that's the, the, the wild card here. Otherwise, I mean, you're right. You know, a lot of the polls, a lot of things are, I mean, well, I guess not. I mean, they're all, they're all calling the it a all coin close, toss. The polls are all bullshit. Yeah. So, who cares? Yeah. so right. you know, well, you know, if you have a 4% difference or something on there, either way, if it goes either way, it could be a landslide on the other one. I hope, Whatever it is, I hope it's pretty a wide gap, even though I know he's not going to accept it. If, if he doesn't win, he's not going to accept it. Um, it's just a foregone conclusion, right? I mean, um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, maybe he'll change his ways. Who knows? Uh, who knows? I mean, we'll see what happens. Because uh, I, I got Trump in a, in a landslide. I think he'll get over 300 electoral votes. I think it's going to be a blowout. Um, okay. Because, I mean, I get what you're saying, but what I'm... I think the fact that black men are breaking for Trump is so big, so okay. big, uh, and people aren't really tough because to me, American culture is dictated by black culture. Like America, you know, like if you think about the most influential cultural voices in our in in America, it's it's almost all black men, right? Rappers, you know, uh, movie stars, athletes, you know, and they're breaking for Trump in a pretty big way. I, so I think it's going to be. So I have no idea. I don't pay attention to polls, but it's the vibe. Yeah, it's, it's, you know? it is. A, it's interesting. To, you know, it's interesting to look at it that way, you know, because it is a black woman that is, you know, running for, for president. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it is odd or yeah. it's it's interesting. In, in yeah. Any way. So yeah. we'll see. We will know <laughs> by the time this airs who who has actually won it. But that actually gets to a topic that I think is somewhat worth exploring for us. Right. And this will get us into some other angles as well, which is, so I, I bring this up because there was a comment, and I've been getting these comments on my blog, like, a lot, right, over the past, like, this year, really. Whenever we talk about, like, the antitrust lawsuits commission, you know, settlement, blah, 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 and I would say things like, well, the DOJ is not going to intervene until the election, and a lot of folks are like, well, once the election is done, everything's going to change, Right. And I think it's coming from brokers, realtors, you know, sort of, I don't know, people who are industry figures who think that Trump is going to win. And when Trump gets into office, he's going to just completely undo the Biden administration's, you know, war against real estate. Right. Well, I mean, but that but that's there's precedent to, to say that, because, I mean, that's kind of exactly what happened <laughs> when 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 Biden won. Right. I mean. They they tore up that degree and there's and I think right. they're trying to get that to go to the Supreme Court right. now. I mean, so it's I mean, possible. it's not like it's not a crazy a, a notion, right? No, it's I'm not saying it's crazy. Yeah. So I thought yeah. it's worth us just talking about. Okay, let's assume, right, that Trump. Let's assume Harris wins. Start there. Okay. Okay. Does anything change in, in regards to to what? What? what do you mean like the change? DOJ, the FTC, all of the focus on NAR and on real estate industry. No, I think, I think it's, I think it's still, it, it, it continues to doing what it's been doing. Right. right? So, okay. Yeah, so I if Harris that, wins, I think four more years, again, she's the vice president now. She's not new. You know what I mean? She's been right. in the administration as Biden DOJ has been going after NAR. So this is a, so I think the expect, and I think that's reasonable, Right. You know, it's especially since she's come out and said, I won't do anything different. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well, then if Harris wins, we what we can expect this. Nothing changes on the DOJ, you know, FTC, like all of that front. Okay. If Trump wins, you're expecting it to change. Well, I mean, again, I'm only going on what, you know, there was a, sure. a, a, a settlement in a sense or an agreement that they had against 
uh, they had with the DOJ or was it the FTC about it was the DOJ. Yeah. Yeah. With the DOJ in regard to how they wanted it handled. So I would, my assumption would be that hasn't changed much and he would want that back in place. Right. So, I mean, that's, so that would be a change to, um, to what is currently happening, which is they've kind of torn that up and, and right. don't want to follow that anymore. Yeah. So you think Trump likes realtors? Do you think he likes Do I think NAR? Trump? Do you think Trump likes realtors or NAR? I mean, he did speak at the NAR convention. Yeah. Right. We do remember that. And he did right. say some real nice things about realtors and NAR and so on. But I mean. Yeah. I mean, I think Trump likes, I like, Trump likes anybody that likes him, right? If, if you're going to, if you're going to give right. him money, if you're going to support him, he, he, his loyalties are that. I mean, you know, he's famous for like, <laughs> he had this whole thing of like, he thought Bitcoin was like a, uh, a scam, a joke. And then suddenly the Bitcoin co- corporations start giving him money and now he's a Bitcoin company. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you know, he's a guy that will, you know, if you play to his affections, I think, you know, are going to, uh, to go there. If you invite him to speak at your conference, he probably is going to like you a little bit more. Right, right? right. I mean, I think he's pretty transparent in that way. Okay. All right. Cause I don't, I don't think it changes. So yeah. he just lets what's in place go, go in place. So I would have thought differently, um, and I'm writing a post about this right now, um, but I think the fact that he picked J.D. Vance as his VP is really, really significant, right? So I did a little bit of research, and Vance has said some really favorable things about Lena Khan. Yeah, no, they call her, I mean, there's a a whole group that are called conservatives. That's right. Right? That's right. Yeah. And there is a bit of a conflict within the GOP, within the Republican yeah. Party around that, because the traditional Republican sort of stance has been pro-business, right? So they're anti-regulation, right. anti, you know, they're like, hey, just leave the companies alone, you know. So antitrust was not like a real high under priority thing. Vance, I think, changed that equation. And for myself, I don't think Trump actually has a lot of policy. No, of course not. He never has. I, Come on. No, that's not true. He has a couple that he's, that's really important to him. I think like illegal immigration is a big one for him, right? But, and, you know, bringing back manufacturing, whatever, you know, like I, that sort of thing. But he's not, he doesn't have a position on antitrust, I don't think, right? I don't think it's a position on like farm subsidies. <laughs> I just don't right. think. He's not a policy wonk. Right? No, yeah. whereas I think yeah. Vance is. And Vance being, so I think about it like, okay, Vance being sort of the the face or the voice of populist national conservatism within that administration hmm. suggests okay. to me that I think the antitrust things going to be a little different under the second term right? where there's, you know, they just don't like big anything, right? So Vance has said, like, I don't know if you saw his recent uh, Joe Rogan appearance where he talks about, I just hate big tech, right? And he talks about, look, the companies go make money. You know, he's very pro-business in that way. He just doesn't want companies or organizations like economic actors to become so big that they start dominating consumers, the dominate American life. I kind of feel Culture. like even what? Culture. Yeah. And even under the, the, the new Trump administration, even if he were to win, I don't think the DOJ is going to let go of this thing. And I don't think they're going to step in and say, well, just leave, leave real estate alone. Right. I could be totally wrong about that, but that was just my gut feeling based on kind of what Vance has said. Like, nobody knows. <laughs> no one right. actually knows. Right. Uh, and just the general sort of philosophy around sort of national conservative populist movement. Right. Which, now, on the flip side, the one advantage I think real estate does have is – it's if you want to think about it this way, it is made up of 1.6 million small business owners. Right. right. So, on the other hand, NAR is a problem, right? So, in other words, I could see the Vance, the Trump Vance uh, DOJ going after NAR, but not going after brokers. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're you're. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 hard because to they're path, very pro yeah. like small business and real estate is intensely entrepreneurial, right? Like everyone wakes up without a paycheck. You know, they you got to go hustle. You got to go. 
but that's not at the organized real estate level. They're not waking up every day going to hustle. Like they're not entrepreneurs that way, right? And the war with the DOJ has been against NAR. And I don't know that I see that stopping because Trump comes into office. Right? Yeah, I mean, but you know, going back to like what's supposed to be core um, to NAR is is again their advocacy and their, you know, yep. and they're one of the the largest organizations out there, which means they have the most money. Yep. Again, if NAR decides, and you know, just for their own survival, not politics and whether they agree with the guy or not, it's it's to court favor. They got it. They could, you know, well, they're a little bit, maybe their cash isn't what it used to be after the settlement, but there's still quite a much to throw around there. Sure. You know, and- I, I still think they have a potential of like, you know, and again, the guy is, you know, if, if you show up with a check, he's, he's, he, he, he can change his mind. I think, I mean, that's, yeah, that's probably true of a lot of politicians the, as well. The biggest favor thing in favor of that though, is that Shannon McGann um, is very close, like, at least the first Trump. Yeah. Trump, right. Her husband yeah. was the Trump White House counsel. So she's more influential, more of a figure kind of in the Republican circles. So it is possible that under Trump administration, she would. Have he's not he's not instance. going to he's not one of them that's going to jail, though. Right. So. No, I'm pretty sure yeah. he's not. Uh, but, you know, so we'll we'll see what ends up happening. On the flip side, of course, NAR is pretty goddamn woke right now. And that is not a good place to be if Vance is the VP and <laughs> the new Trump administration. Like, they're going to have to scale is, that shit N- way back. Any, any, NAR is pretty goddamn woke right now. I don't, they have a I speech mean, code, dude. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but, I mean, they just got fucking, you know, sued for sexual harassment. That doesn't sound fucking very woke to me. I mean, NAR is like <laughs> DEI all up the ass. What are you talking about? Like, uh, I, I I don't, so I don't know. I'm about just that. saying they're going to have to scale that stuff back. Like, they're going to have to repeal the speech code, I think. Right. Otherwise, like Elon Musk, you know, who's going to be in the administration, he's a First Amendment guy. JD Vance, all these guys, they're going to be like, you're not going to get a lot of occurring favors. Right. In other words, even if Shannon McGann were to go meet with these guys, like, listen, we're going to need blah, 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 et cetera. It's like one of the first questions out their mouth. Yeah, but, you know, NAR is just. DEI infested woke monster. Like, why? Why do we want to do any favors for that organization? Yeah, I. I, I it's interesting you look at it that way. I, I don't. I, I DEI infested woke monster. I don't. That's not the first thing that comes to mind when I think of NAR. But okay. Do you want to pull up the homepage of NAR <laughs> and see how much they're talk diversity? Like how important that is to them. <laughs> well, I think, you know, I think fair housing is, a, is I don't think it's fair, not housing fair housing is yeah. No, it's okay. not fair housing. They're not like fair housing. They're talking about diversity. <laughs> it's so important to okay. them right now. Yeah, yeah I, I anyway. haven't looked at the homepage in a while. All right. So I don't, now, if things aren't going to change, right, because that's the thesis here. If things are not going to really change. Either way. So we're saying, you know, way. whether it's, yeah, okay. Whether it's Harris or Trump, if it's Harris, four more years are the same. If it's Trump, maybe some changes. Oh, you think? I thought you said no changes. No, no there would be some changes because, like, oh, okay. first okay. of all, I mean, he's he and Elon are on the record saying they want to eviscerate the federal bureaucracy, right? So if nothing else, there could be a whole lot of layoffs, right? Yeah, I mean, again, we hear that a lot, but I mean, you know, there's still it's still three branches of government, right? I mean, I think Obama and Trump and and Biden all, you know, have challenges as far as, I mean, and, that, and that's, I think, a great thing about our country is that there's these governors in place and governors not in the sense of a person managing a state, but, but you know, things you have to go through to, to enact yeah. changes that are going to really um, affect things. So yeah. you can talk about all these different things, but there still needs to be laws passed or it still needs to go to Congress. It still needs to, they can have some executive orders and such, but um, no, a lot of this no, stuff, no. anything real is going to have to be, no, no, you, um, you could get you through could Congress. People off. You don't need congressional. You don't like the president is the head of the executive. He's like, look, uh, we can't afford to keep all these people. Just I'm going to lay off half this workforce. He can do that right, without any issue, quite frankly, right? Well, I, I think there'd be issues. Right? I think there'd be issues, right? There'd be a lot no, of pissed there, off there, people. What, what issues? I mean, a lot of pissed off people. So what? Companies lay people off all the time. Right. Okay, yeah, nobody's going to care that they got laid off. Go ahead. 
No, they're going to care, but I mean, it's not like you can't stop it, right? Like if you get, now, here's the thing. If you get fired, that's different, right? If you get fired, then there's all sorts of laws that come into place. I'm just saying, so Elon's come in, it's like whatever, government efficiency, going to eliminate 70, 80% of the uh, workforce, you know, 50%. So I'm just pointing out that if under Trump, you know, administration, if he were to win, there's a very high likelihood that the staff at the DOJ will be cut. Right. Okay. All right. So that will have an impact, obviously, because you know if you have half the number of lawyers that used to have, I think before, he probably if it's Trump, he probably starts at the FBI, <laughs> and which is part of the Department of Justice, of course, right? So we'll see, but I mean, they so you think Trump is going to go for a whole defund uh, the DOJ? That's that's his that's his platform. I th- I think so. I mean, wow. and it'll be done in the wow. name of government. Look, I mean, he's already come out and said Elon's going to head up the government efficiency office, right? Right. I just, I mean, I, I've never heard from, I mean, if anything, I hear, you know, the, uh, Trump saying, uh, criticizing the left for talking about defunding Defunding the police. Well, no, they defund, it's all about law enforcement, right? I mean, it's, it's. Um, I, I just can't, I can't imagine that, they would turn tails on that so quickly to say, we're going to defund, defund law enforcement. I mean, that's just, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, to me, it's antithetical for what they've been saying all along. So maybe the DOJ doesn't get as hammered as much as the other, you know, department of education. They've already talked about, we're just going to eliminate that, you know? Uh, So I'm just suggesting that I think the one impact that could be is just staff cuts, just layoffs, you know, not, Right. Not like some, you know, like we're going to change the way we do, but it's just literally like there's half the people. But even then, if the Vance sort of favor, sort of the fact that he's very favorable to antitrust actions, certain types of antitrust actions, suggests to me that the Department of Justice will still have an antitrust, antitrust division. Right. And as long as they're going after big tech, big pharma, big ag, you know, big whatever including, I think, big real estate, I think they're going to be okay with that. I do think that there might be a small change in the way they go after, like, brokerages. Not that the DOJ has been going after brokerages. Yeah, they haven't. I mean, so there wouldn't be any change. Yeah, okay. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, so if there's not going to be a substantial change like that, then I think we'd have to look at who might be influencing the DOJ. And there's been one very, very interesting example of late. And you wanted to talk about her work, so I will turn it over to you. Yeah, so um, I think the the bigger news here was, not bigger news, but one of the things uh, that ran across my uh, feed that, and she's been in the feed before, is Tanya. Um, is it Monastier, right? Is that how we, uh, and I asked her how to pronounce her name and what's <laughs> And I'm 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 still I'll go with you. sorry Tanya, sorry Tanya. So it's um, not Tanya, it's Tanya. Tanya, sorry, that's right, Tanya. Okay. Um, Got so, them Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> process about about um, Tanya, not Tanya. And she's been critical. She's a, she's an attorney, I think, out of Maryland. Is that right? No, she's a University of uh, oh, Buffalo, Buffalo law professor. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So. She's a law professor, not yeah. an attorney. Yeah. And I say Canadian because it turns out she's actually Canadian. She's from Canada. She graduated top of her class at Toronto Law. So I she's mean, not she's not in Maryland and she's not an attorney. She's an attorney, but she's a law professor. I don't know if she's admitted to practice in the US though. That I don't know. Well, if she's a professor in Baltimore. It, no, in uh Buffalo. Buffalo, New okay. York. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I, sorry. Then I got, yeah, I got the bees mixed up there. Yeah. Right. And she, she's been critical of, of, of some of the contracts and agreements yes. that are being put out there. She's done so there was, that, analyzing yeah. the forms. Yes. So she looks at a lot of the forms and she's, and she's uh, highlighted some things, but, but recently as it turns out that she, well, I guess this does make her, I guess this does answer your question because she was part of this class. She actually bought a home in the mm-hmm. United States in 2022 mm-hmm. So she filed a objection to the settlement. Yes, that's right. Um, and and apparently she's she brought receipts. Right? One hundred thirty-five pages. One hundred thirty-five pages where yeah, she talks I, about I, yeah. 
um, I, I can't remember off the, some of the quotes, but basically how this is um, the worst thing that could ever happen as yeah. far as a thing. She's actually um, also talked about how she has been talking to the DOJ and a lot That's of the right. stuff that she put in that objection were in a paper that she delivered to the DOJ That's right. That's about right. how this thing really just makes it everything convoluted and yep. it does the exact opposite or doesn't maybe not exact opposite, but it doesn't really set out to right. uh, fix the problems that it says. And then another thing, which I thought was fascinating also is she says, and if you look at the way the settlement is structured, everybody thinks it's, you know, okay, this is a great win for consumers, but it's really a great win for the attorneys, which I know a lot of us have, have talked about where yep. the fees are enormous. Yep. She's found evidence of like, this, you know, the law firm is charging one fee to somebody else and yep. these exorbitant fees to them yep. and how the people that are affected may get 25 or 20 bucks That's right. as part of this settlement when, you know, they were, you know, the commissions were around an average of 20 to 25,000, right? So That's this right. really doesn't, but, and then the balance of what the attorneys gets paid, just as she says, is kind of embarrassing to legal profession. Sure. Um, so I think there's a, isn't there some sort of hearing on the 26th of this month? Is it that right? I believe in November? So, yes. yes. And, and so hold on your seats, everybody, because this thing may still blow up in front of everybody. Uh, it's not that right. Problem. You don't think, I mean, because, uh, I don't know, man, she makes some good points. Look, look um, she, I, I just published the thing of reviewing her, her stuff. So. The first thing I'll say is that I, I said, like, I'm not interested in the legal fee wrangling stuff because I get it. And as a lawyer, like, you know, as someone in the legal profession, I could see why she's offended by all that. But, hey, man, like, you know, law, like these class action cases where the lawyers walk away with a private jet and the consumer gets a 10 percent coupon, you know, to your next purchase at Verizon or some shit. This is like so commonplace. <laughs> You know that might be something for like legal reform. Why? Why is that? Why? Why do you say it for? Why are we? Why do they get a pass and realtors don't? Then what are you talking about? Well, I mean, you know, you're saying, well, this is so commonplace. This is so whatever. They're just going to let that fly. But this whole lawsuit's about, you know, what's commonplace in real estate as far as their fees. Yeah, are this is the right? problem. Like everyone mixes up what this law. This lawsuit wasn't about realtors making money from commissions. This lawsuit was about the fact that the seller was being forced to pay the buyer agent's commission. You know, again, uh, I mean, you know, plaintiffs and, and defendants are forced to play the the, the their lawyers uh, a standard thirty percent. You're not forced. Well, to neither pay. neither were the sellers or buyers. Look, you could have okay, whatever. Reform. Like I got no issue with that. That's what I'm saying. Like that's right. that's okay. her and the legal reform folks, and we could have plenty of conversations about what should it be in a contingent case. But right. Fine. Okay. I'm saying I'm not interested in any of that. Right. Because it doesn't impact the settlement. Maybe there'll be some conversation for the judge trying to justify the fees. I don't care. It doesn't change anything for us, right? Because I'm not I'm not one of the lawyers. I, you know, like I, I don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. Right. I get you. What I give a shit about is all the other stuff she talks about. Right. And to your point, she brought receipts. And so I read all 135 pages of her, her objection and it's it's pretty damning. I mean, she she has a she has a point, right? But you don't think it's gonna matter. I don't think it's gonna matter. So I why? So. I mean, what do you think of the most damaging? Because I know she but, but go ahead. There's a lot. But the reason why I don't think it's going to matter is judges very rarely take an objection like this to overturn a settlement. Right? Especially when, in this case, because this settlement went into effect in August before final approval, think of the changes that have been made already. Right? Think of the chaos and the whatever. And, and, and Tanya... I keep wanting to say Tanya. Tanya talks about that, right? In her, she, like, one of her points is this has caused just mass confusion. Consumers have no yeah. idea what the hell's going on. Agents don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what to do. It's just confusion, right? So one of the points she makes is it's like we kept the same system, right? But made <laughs> because, it more confusing. Right, because steering has not really been impacted, but just made it such more, so much more confusing. It's almost like she would prefer to go back to the old system, you know, where at least the rules are real clear. Everyone understood what the deal was, right? This new system is awful. That's one of her criticisms. Um, all I can say is if you think that's confusing, imagine if the court rejects this settlement after we've done all of this. 
Right. There's no way. I don't. I just don't see it. I don't know. I mean, it, it's. It sounds like for the court, it would be an opportunity because I mean, the fact that it has been in fact, you've seen what has happened. Now you can go back and look at. And she, she identifies I think seven ways mm-hmm. that real estate agents or brokers are kind of getting away. Uh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. get away with things. Yeah. Well, now it's an opportunity. There's. It's not like you're just. Oh, this is this is all broken. You should just blow it up. Well, again. She lays out, and other people in the industry have no laying out of like what the what the problems are, the yeah. timing of the of the of the touring agreement. Yep. Right. The the way that they kind of back they can backdate some of these, um, uh, show uh, buyers the amendments. Agreements. Yeah. The amendments, the amendments and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I mean, there's, you know, I think there's a couple nip and tucks you could do here that the, that the the judge could come back to with that you know, but hey, we're not, not gonna yeah. we're not gonna like. Okay, we're not going to certify this unless these two things are addressed, right? And I don't think that's going to be. I think some if if they include something like the timing of a showing agreement, I think the agreement. I think the the, the industry would applaud applaud and want some of those kind of changes. First of all, she doesn't have a problem with the timing of the showing agreement, which is where I disagree with her on, right? And I, again, I, there are two areas where I really kind of disagree with her take on things, but. You know, it was one of those hopefully like civil disagreements that will lead us to a better understanding yeah. of what needs to happen. Because I think the work she's done is phenomenal. You know, and yes. I, I mean, I can honestly say she is actually one of my favorite legal commentators on this because she's from outside the industry. She has she's not being paid by anybody to have an opinion. You know, like like this is and her take is really interesting, right? I don't agree with a lot of it, but you know, it's really really interesting. Um. The other thing, though, I think is maybe the biggest weakness in in her objection, right? And I talk about this generally, and I get why this is, right? Like I don't, I'm not faulting her, I'm not blaming her. Her goal with this paper was to object to the settlement, right, and try and get the court to change its mind or potentially preserve it for appeal. So maybe she might appeal the final settlement approval to the Eighth Circuit, right? And then say this settlement should be struck down. Who the hell knows? But part of it is because because that was her goal. She needed to look at all of these abuses, and boy, that she did find a lot. I'm just like these some of these state realtor forms that are just atrocious. Some of these workarounds that agents are doing. Like I think my favorite was the driveway debacle. Is I think what she called it, where like you're a consumer, you go to Zillow, you say I want to look at this home. You show up to the home, and in the driveway, the agent sticks a piece of paper in front of you. He's like, you have to sign this. It's by law. You know, that I, I, yeah. so if you don't sign, I can't show you this house. And then you sign some buyer agency agreement that wasn't explained to you, that you know the agent didn't sit down and actually have a conversation, right? Yeah, it's law. Like, it's the law. It, it's shit like that. Thing. Like, yeah. I get it. And she's just point. My point is, this thing has been going on now for like three months, right? Two months. Like, yeah, you know, we're we're trying to change the way that the industry's been doing things for a hundred years, right? Maybe we need to give it a little bit more time than two months, right? Before we can assess yeah, yeah. what the impact is, right? Because I personally think, in the long run, a lot of these abuses will just go away naturally. I really, hmm. I really do, right? So, for example, uh, this is something a point I've been making over and over again. James Dwiggins, our friend James Dwiggins, you know, who's quite influential, has been out there fucking going on every – go to every conference, going on every podcast, you know, just pounding the pavement, just saying, put it in the offer. Right. Right? Don't offer comp- – and EXP has come out and said, we're not offering compensation. You want to get paid, just put it in the offer. Put it in the offer. Right? So all these things that she points out – so, for example, she points out one of the workarounds is the buyer agent will call the listing agent and go, hey, what are you offering? And if the amount is not enough, then they'll steer their buyer from showing that house, right? Well, more and more listing agents are simply saying, put it in the offer, right? So I'm like, give it another six months. Maybe in six months from now, most listing agents will just be like, just put it in the offer, bro, right? Well, I, we hope that. And you know, James that. is doing some some God's work there. But I don't know, man. I mean, I think a lot of these brokers are resistant to that. Right, I mean, I, you can resist, but I mean, like, like, it's like we'll see what the marketplace says. Because you know I mean, James is getting a lot of heat for this. What do you mean? They'll put it in the for offer this, thing. 
Yeah, right. Uh, who's he getting heat from? Brokers uh, and agents that don't. Uh, are we talking that, like that, whatever we say? Like again, EXP's already made a policy, right? Like, is James getting heat from serious like thinkers and leaders in this? Year? I don't see it. Yeah. Like random comments on Facebook. Who gives a shit? You know, those agents aren't going to okay. be around in two years. Like, who cares? Okay. So your yeah. argument is that, and you've said this before. This is you know this is going to take some time to kind of it's work take through time. it. Yeah. Right. So, but, but, but right now when, when, when Tanya can c- present to the court clear evidence right. Right. that abuses are going on, right. he should, the, the judge should ignore that now because the judge should have faith and confidence that this will work itself out. I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, I don't think it's, I think it's unlikely that the judge will reject this settlement at this late stage. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if I'm a judge and I'm presented clear evidence and she's, like I said, brought receipts. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Here's I mean, so I have to make the, I have to make the decision as a judge that, okay, these are, these are one-offs. These are, these are outliers. These are the, these are the bad apples. And that, you know, this is looking at the, the entirety of this settlement, the market, the invisible hand will make this go away, right? There, there's um, another thing. I consider. guess right. there's another thing to consider, and Tanya actually points this out in her objection. Once you reach a settlement, the adversarial nature of a lawsuit goes away. Meaning, Catchmark and the the you know Mil, uh, Cohen Milstein guys, all the plaintiffs' lawyers are no longer really fighting NAR. Like now, they're kind of in the same team. Let's get the settlement through. Oh, yeah. No, they want to get paid. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So, okay. So this objection is filed. Number one, I don't think they're just going to read it. Um, But maybe some clerk reads it and does a, you know, or maybe feeds the chat GPT and they summarize this for me. Whatever. (laughs) Right. But then the two lawyers, the actual lawyers that he's, you know, that's been in his courtroom for what, three years now are like, oh, no, we don't think that. Don't don't listen to that objection, judge. You know, this is a short term thing. These are bad apples. We can deal with it. Blah, blah, blah. Plus, if you were to reject the settlement, the amount of damage you would cause the industry is incalculable, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't, if you I don't see it, if you change. if you kind of take what Tanya is saying to a, if you stretch that out, it, it it's almost like because she's saying this is this is more confusing, sure, and it is the real estate industry is just going to keep operating the way they have been in the past. That I don't agree with. Okay, okay, but that's agree. what you, that's what her thing is. So. Correct. There could be a, a, if you take her point of view, right. it's like, yeah, that's the reason why these guys are settling so quick because they like this settlement because this, the way it's structured, oh yeah, we can get around this. This is no problem. Yeah. I mean, and what have we, hold on. And what have we been saying a lot, of, a lot of times we've been saying it's not going to change much. Yeah. Right? I've that, changed my that's mind been, that. okay. I've changed my mind on that. <laughs> I think I okay. said that. I was like, no, I, thought I mean, this you, you, nothing. You, no, actually, yeah. I changed my mind on that. So here's one of the things I okay, think. Okay, that's where, big, right? I mean, that's a a big thing. You were you, you we were both on that that wavelength. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't love much. the settlement when I first saw it because I'm like, wait, so you can still offer compensation? You just can't do it on the MLS, right? But there are these knock on effects. Like once I've had time to like absorb some more things and think about the more things and see how the industry responded. So one of the key differences I think between. Tanya and me, and believe me, like I'm about as critical of NAR and this whole thing as anybody, right? I think one of the differences, and I wrote about this in my post. So, like, let me how how to put this. Do you have any friends who are cops? Yeah. Okay. I have a bunch of friends who are cops because I'm in like a shooting league and stuff, right? You ever talk to them about what their view of human nature is? Oh, it's not a good view. It's right. Like they're yeah. all very cynical, very dark. Well, and nobody ever them. nobody ever calls a cop to say, "Look at this beautiful thing happening." Right? You're only <laughs> exactly. calling a cop when something bad. And that, right. if that doesn't, it's going right. to affect your psyche. Of absolutely. course. So yeah. all my cop friends, they think human beings are all like greedy, evil, selfish, you know, lazy. Like, yeah, because you spend all your time dealing with criminals, right, and the victims of crime. Like, your 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 entire job is like in the dregs, in the ugliest, you know, yeah. underbelly of society. So, of course, it's going to be real hard for you to be like, you know, people are inherently good and kind. Like, I get it. 
right? So in this case, I think Tanya has spent the last year, let's say, you know, however long she's been active, looking at forms, looking at all these things, looking for bad behavior. And there's a lot of bad behavior out there. Yeah, there's, she doesn't <laughs> have to look far. She doesn't have to look that far. There's a lot of bad behavior out there. So I, you know, so her perspective that the industry is just this like malicious, evil monopolists who are trying to hold on to the 6% with, you know, every fiber of their being. I just don't think that's true. Do you know what I mean? Like, in other words, you and I have actually seen the good side of the industry, right? I've seen brokers and agents who are like, you know what? If it's going to make the deal work, I will give up my commission. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen agents yeah. actually do that, right? Because like, you know what? I, I don't need the money from this deal. I'm successful enough. This buyer really wants this house. You know what? I'll just throw my commission in if that's going to make this deal work. I've seen agents do that. Almost every broker I talk to, again, it's one thing to be mistaken, right? It's one thing to have this mistaken belief that offering compensation is actually in my seller's best interest, right? Versus like maliciously manipulating. Like I just don't see that. I think most brokers and agents, most, genuinely just want to do the right thing for their clients and get paid for it, right? Right. Now, there may be ignorance. There might be incompetence. Maybe they think what is in their client's best interest maybe really isn't. All of those are conversations. Yeah, I'm just pointing out that I don't think real estate brokers and agents are like evil and malicious, right? Whereas I think so a lot of Tanya's objection is influenced by this idea that the industry is evil and malicious and just wants to, you know, squeeze out like every dollar of like rent seeking profits. I just don't see that. I just don't believe that. Are there some of those people? Of course, no question. You know, are there? But do I think that's the majority, or the majority of the leaders? I just don't think so. Like Leo Pereira, you know, EXP. Yeah. Do I think that Leo is out there saying we're EXP, we're the biggest? So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna squeeze out every bit of monopoly profits from and screw the consumer. I mean, the man is literally saying, "Here's a buyer agent form." Industry, take it and use it if you want. Here's this, you know, and I've, we've read those forms. Tanya's read those forms. So that the EXP forms are really pretty decent. I think that is more what I have the seen norm. and experienced. I think that's more the norm in the industry, right? So given that, I'm saying, yes, right now, a lot of the bad behavior, I think a lot of the bad behavior she is pointing out is probably just like ignorance, right? Or just... Because people can't change that fast. I mean, imagine the average real estate agent is 59 white female in the suburbs, right? So if you've been doing things a certain way for 15 years, right, this thing comes down, you got to completely change. Like, it's going to take a little time. That's all. It doesn't mean that those 59-year-old white you know, women are like malicious, like, oh, how do I screw my buyer to the maximum extent? Like, they're not doing that. Right? Yeah. They're just... They're not fully aware yet, like uh, especially when some of the rules are just kind of wacky, right? Oh, like, insane. like you have to sign agreement before I show you in the house. It's like, right, right. You kind of get why some people are, Great some example. agents are going, really? Who? I got to follow this rule, right? I mean, right. yeah, it's kind of wacky. Now, now, here's the thing: in, in Tanya's defense, one of the things she talks about in the objection is about that issue specifically. She acknowledges. If agents are using these short-term showing agreements as kind of a get-to-know-you step, she's like, I don't see a problem with them. Like, that's the way it's going to get used. Yeah. Right? Like, give it a little time, the way the showing agreements are going to happen, until we change the rule, okay? And if the plaintiff's lawyers and NAR and the judge all sign off on it, they can change that. It's like, listen, the timing was off, right? Let's just make it, you have to have this conference before you submit an offer. No problem. Until then, people are going to do these showing agreements like, listen, uh, I just have to get this signed because the MLS requires, look, it's, it's free. There's, no, there's none of this, right? Just so we can get to know each other and see if we want to work together. By the end of the tour, you know what? We need to go have some coffee at Starbucks and then I need to pitch why you should work with me. Or we decide during the tour, you know what? You're an asshole. I don't want to work with you. Yeah. Done. Thanks very much. Yeah. See you later. And, Enjoy. And, and yeah. And what you're saying is that the, 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 the agents that are shoving something in the 
face of them that's that's a full on buyer's agreement right, right. and it's lying saying it's like yeah. the state of California says you yeah. have to sign yeah. this. Those agents is, are gonna get first of all, they're gonna get sued. Yeah. Second of all, like everybody else in the industry is gonna look at them as scumbags. Yeah. Like, give it a little time. Give it a little time. You know, like I just don't and the reason why I say that is one of the examples she brought up was um around uh what she called uh oral waivers. Right. So, you know, like I think I'm on the record saying I'm a big fan of buyer agency agreements that do not put the buyer on the hook. That will say something like, look, I'm going to do this for you, Greg, and my fee is going to be no more, no more than 2%. Okay. But, and it, I'm, we're going to go ask the seller, we're going to put in the offer, right? ask the seller for, you know, for my compensation. If there's a shortfall, you don't owe me anything. Like you're not on the hook for that 2%. I'm a big fan of that. And I think competition will eventually drive things to that point. She seems to oppose it. But when I read her stuff, she was really concerned about oral promise. So the example she gave was there was a case where an agent says to the buyer, listen, just sign this buyer agreement, but I promise you, I'm not going to enforce it against you. I'm not going to, right? If the seller doesn't pay the 3%, or whatever, I'm not going to come after you for it, right? So the client signs it. Like, okay, cool, right? And then at closing, it's like, well, you have this contract. You got to pay me 3%. It's like, but didn't you promise you're not going to enforce that? Well, you know, you got to go with what's on the paper. That, like, that's what she was upset about objecting to. Here's the thing. So the Reddit thread where she found an example of that, mm -hmm. you have like 50 agents, realtors underneath that thread going like, that agent's a scumbag. Report that agent. Don't, you know, like... Oral right. promise is just part of the contract. So I'm like, this notion that agents and brokers are just out there to screw consumers, I just don't think that's true. I think yeah. most but, but, agents but, and brokers- But why do we have that. why do we have policies and laws, right? I mean, we, we have those because of the bad actors out there, right? No question. Of course. Right. Yeah. Of course. So, okay. But so here's, let me ask all, all, all I'm getting at is, are we, is, is this like the settlement rules? Are those the be all end all? We're going to live under that for the next hundred years? I don't see it. We're going to have to make adjustments. Like we said, the timing, right, of certain things. Maybe the compensation piece, the consent, like we're going to have to make tweaks. All I'm saying is we don't know what the impact of the current changes are. We're not going to know for, I'm going to say, at least a year, right. maybe two. So before we, Start like, you know, let's just throw everything out and start over, right? Now, here's the thing. It would be one thing if Tanya, in that 135 pages, said, these rules suck. Here are better rules. She didn't say, here are better rules. Here's what should happen. She didn't say that. She just said, these, the, you know, the current stuff sucks. I'm like, well, you know, how about we, we accept the current stuff? You know, maybe, maybe you know, uh, argue with the lawyers about how much money they're taking. Figure something out there. And then, you know, maybe we revisit this in a year. Let's revisit okay. this in two so, years. So two things. Yeah. Um, Self-steering, as they, yeah. I think she was yeah, calling yeah, yeah. it, right? Yeah. When the buyer, what do you think about that? Right. When the buyer says, listen, I, unless the seller's paying, right, I, I, I don't, I, I can't afford, I can't afford to, to put more, uh, to pay you. So- uh, yeah. If they're not, if they're, uh, what do you, is that, is that steering, right? Yes. It, it is. So, yes. so, so agents should still show every house, even yes. though the seller has said specifically, I'm not paying your co compensation. Yes. Of course. Okay. All right. Of course. So then, okay. Uh, uh, no, next thing is. Well, the whole self steering thing is just utter horseshit anyway. Because the most of the way that it's done, it's in a form and there's a checkbox. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Because here's the thing. As we have, you and I have talked about it, and I've talked to Sonny about it because she's the, you know, recovering broker. Like, you know, let's say the house says it's, it's as is. Right? The, the listing and the listing agent is like, look, this is a fixer-upper. It's as is. Okay? You're the buyer agent. Your buyer is like, I really like this house, but boy, you know, that water heater. Right. As as a buyer agent, you're not going to write an offer saying, "Hey, my client's willing to pay this ten thousand over asking, but request that your seller fix the water heater." Listen, it says as is. 
I know, bro. I know it says as is, but my client's offering 10000 over asking. Do you maybe want to? Of course, that happens every single fucking day. Yeah, so what yeah. are we talking about here? Well, yeah. My clients are offering compensation. That's cool. My buyers so, are writing this offer. It's more than asking price. It's the whatever. Yeah. It's paying so, cash. So it, 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 it is. Like, yeah, it, it come really, on. Yeah, it's really, a, it, it's really a communication issue. It says, so if they say, well, you know, if I don't, if, if they're not offering, like, you know, let's say that the buyer's name is Linda. Linda, let me tell you something. Even though they may forcibly say they're not paying, right? They're going to get all sorts of offers. So I'm going to show you everything because we don't know what we don't we'll know, know yet. Right. Yeah. So there, there should be a communication thing there. Of course. Um, to do that. Because I think the way that agents, these bad agents are using it, right? They're using it trying to needle the fucking seller, well, of right? As a, as, a, as a tool. It's not, it's not anything having to do with a buyer at all. It's for their own interest that they're using it, which is bullshit. Yeah. Of course. And okay, it, so, no, you know, it's not even that. I don't even think it's that complicated. I think it's just, again... The industry is used to doing things a certain way. Right. Like, okay. How do I keep to that old way as much as possible? Okay. Self-steering. That's okay. So we're going to put a checkbox and then I'm just going to convince my buyer to let me check that box so that I could do what I, what I already yeah. know how to do. Yeah. I'm like, so that you don't think a lot of it you think is not a nefarious thing. It's just. No. It's yeah, just. It's just it's ignorance just and. Ignorance and it's just being lazy because let's face it human beings are lazy we're all yeah. lazy every single one of us like the entire technology industry would not exist if we were not lazy right? we don't want okay. to do work we don't have to that's all, all right. it is okay, saying, let's second, give it six months here, you know? here's a second question or observation so it sounds like to me that you're saying that the settlement in itself is is a good thing and that all that it, it's a good thing and that all it needs is really time for the industry adjust. There's nothing in that, that settlement. No. Right. There's nothing in the settlement right now that you're so egregious that you find so egregious. You don't, that you don't want to make a change to. Correct. Um, Interesting. Well, let me put it different. I don't know if the settlement is a good thing or a bad thing. What I'm saying is I, I think it's too early to make that call. So, but you're, you are confident enough in the settlement that it's a good starting point. I mean, it's better than nothing. Like, I like working on different problems. Right. right. And, you know, like I said, and you and I have talked about this, and we're going to talk about it more probably when we do our big debate about the value of the MLS. One of the big things that the settlement does is it eviscerates the value of the MLS. And now that's not going to come out in any short-term <laughs> Facebook post, right? It's not like some agent's going to be out there. Like, that is a longer-term impact that MLS CEOs understand but no one else does, right? Not yet. Certainly not Tanya. Certainly not some law professor who doesn't, who doesn't know the industry, right? And even something like that where you and I are experts in the MLS, we're going to have a diff difference of opinion and we'll see how it plays. We're not going to see that long-term impact for, what, a year, two years, three years? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I mean, one of the longer-term impacts of this is going to be NAR has been – Exposed as a total paper tiger. <laughs> Jesus, I can't wait for this. <laughs> right? They have. I mean, the, okay. like, what has NAR won? Like, every single case, they got absolutely, they got their ass kicked absolutely in every single instance. Well, was did the MLS is a paper tiger or NAR is a paper tiger? NAR, NAR. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So one of the impacts okay. of that is the MLS are now saying, you know what, We're, we want out of NAR. We have status, dude. The Alabama Associate Realtors, like yeah. we want out of NAR, like. Yeah. So there's these longer term impacts from the settlement. I don't know if they're good or bad. I'm saying we're not going to know for a little bit of time. Yeah, I'm I mean, just there saying is for a, ten, a, right? a lot of the emperor has no clothes here for sure. For sure, and Tanya, yeah. I'm just saying for her objection. I get why she did this because she needs to file an objection to this settlement. So it's not like she could look at long-term trends you know three years from now judge here's what's really going to be a problem like nobody knows so i get why she did what she did and i think it's i think the most of the most valuable things about this for me is she did point out all of these horrible bad behaviors and she put all of that in a 41 page paper to the department of justice <laughs> she pointed out all these flaws with the rules and settlement and sent that on to very important decision makers who we were talking about, you know, yeah. the election. 
as I said, man, if I'm the FTC, I'm reading this objection like, oh, what rules should I craft? What regulations should I be crafting for the real estate industry? I'm going to look at this objection in a real, real close way, right? So the value for me is we should read her paper and objections too, and then kind of try and figure out like, hey, maybe we should get ahead of the curve. Like if we think the DOJ or the FTC is going to object to these things, maybe we should get ahead of that and craft some different rules, different things, right? So like that to me is incredibly valuable. And the fact that she is uncovering like the one thing that is just is an incredible service that she's provided is pointing out just how horrible the state realtor association forms are. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm sorry. At this point, if you're a broker and you are using a state realtor form, uh, you are, I mean, you're, you're just, you know, rolling the dice. Like yeah. chances are you're getting sued. I, I, it's, it's just inconceivable why anyone would use those. So, I think there's a lot of good here. Like I said, to me, this is not going to change the sentiment. I don't think so. I would be shocked. Let's put, I would be shocked if Judge Boo says, hey, you know, because of this objection, hey, you know, that settlement that you all been working on for the last four months, psh, thrown out, like not approved. Spend another six months come with better terms. There's no I way. I don't know. The way, yeah. I mean, there's I no get that. I, 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 I somewhat agree with you, but man, it's been a crazy fucking year. So, True. you know, we, uh, who knows what could fucking happen here. True. Yeah. True. I, I, like I said, to me, the most likely outcome from something like this is something like getting the, the government to craft regulation based on some of the things that she's saying. Right. Right. But once again, how are you going to enforce that? <laughs> Especially when you things, defund when you defund all the departments that wouldn't exactly that, well, that too it? Yeah. right so maybe it's but like one of the things she points out is a lot of these abuses a lot of these bad behaviors are all taking place behind closed doors right so if a if a listing agent against a settlement by the way goes to the cell and says hey you have to offer compensation otherwise no one's going to show your house right well that's in somebody's living room how how are we going to know right. like that's what happened right yeah so to me, but that's a but that's a thing common in a. I mean, that's that's the way crime works too, right? No, true. But <laughs> the reason why I'm a little bit more optimistic about that is I say yes, but that's counterbalanced by competition. Yeah, right. In real estate, if one agent goes to a living room and goes, "Hey, you got to offer compensation, so your commission is going to be six percent," and the, another agent comes in and says, "We're just going to have them put it in the offer, so it's the cost is two and a half percent to me, and then we'll see what the." Dude, yeah, that I'm guy's going to win. Yeah, I, yeah. Right? Just, just naturally competition will kind of tell us where things are going to settle out, which is why I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't yeah. know, right? I do know that it's significant, uh, and more significant than I thought when I first read the settlement. So let's give it some time, see what happens. And, uh, and I think the one thing I would do want to say this, um, because I've had some communications with Tanya, and – She's gotten a lot of hate from the industry because huh. our industry behaves like fucking retard sometimes, right? Like, there's absolutely no reason for any of that, right? No reason for personal attacks, no reason for vitriol. There's no reason for any of it. In fact, I think we should just be like, thank you for pointing out some of these oh, things. Oh, big thank you. Big thank right? you, for really? sure. Because imagine paying We need as someone... many good minds in this as possible, right. for sure. Yeah. Right. And they say, even if you disagree, it's like, hey, thanks for doing the work and putting all this stuff together so we could actually look at it and have a debate about that. Right. I, I do think that's a better approach, not just to Tanya, but to anybody, you know, just, oh, cool. Thanks for pointing out some of these things that we should maybe talk about, we should maybe think about. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's asking too much. But like I said, I think real <laughs> estate's filled with good people. So. You know, I think we're going to, re you know, again, over time, I think we will. Let, let's competition, shit make out. it, make Correct. it work for sure. Correct. So, all right, well, let's rip there and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be buying me a nice steak dinner. Uh, well, I mean, um, let's, 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 let's just, you. let's end that because we're, this will probably drop, um, you know, Wednesday. That's right. And hopefully we will, I mean, if it's a landslide, either way, we'll hopefully know. Hopefully we'll know. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, I would say to everybody, I mean, you know, no matter what side you're on, I mean, we're, yeah. we're all still Americans, right? And I, I mean, we're going to have to find a way 
right. you know, to, to get along. And I think, you know, hopefully whatever happens, we can, we can find that way. Cause it's just been such a, a terrible election season and a terrible, sure. you know, situation be, between, you know, assassination attempts and, yeah, and yeah. all this, this nonsense language. Um, yeah. I just hope uh, whatever happens, we all can kind of like, we're going to have four more years of something and then hopefully everything changes. And I think that that's the. Oh, things are going to change. There's right. no question about it. I will say yeah. this. I do hope it's a landslide one way or the other. Oh God, please. Something, something that, you right. know, I, I, I do hope I, it's like 310 either way. Yeah. Either way. I, I still, I still think if it goes the, the, the one way, one of the candidates is still going to cry foul, but you know, that's, that's another thing. But that's my point. You can't cry foul if it's three. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> whatever. You know, uh, whatever. We'll see. But so let's hope it's not close. Yeah. I'll say that. Let's hope it's not close. So we all yeah. feel like, okay, then that's what it is. And then I'll prepare to move to Argentina, you know, if it's not the. <laughs> if it's. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother. Uh, yeah. I will see you next week. Take care of yourself. Thanks, everybody. everybody.